Hi there, my name is Tatiana and you're watching YouTube channel You Can. Today is April 16, 2023 and we are out in a state park um, foraging for whatever we can forage. This is a huge thing, it's in the dirt, in the freaking dirt and someone stepped on it. Look at all these beautiful flowers. This is chickweed, edible. So ticks ruined Pennsylvania. Um, if anyone lives in Pennsylvania, you're probably aware of Lyme disease that is caused by tick bites. And um, we take it very seriously. I personally don't want to be sick with Lyme disease. I mixed grain alcohol, um, Everclear, with um, lavender essential oil. So this is a one ounce bottle and I have 15 drops of lavender essential oil in here and uh, the rest is filled with um, grain alcohol. And what I do is I just shake it up and I spray the kids down. This is my five and a half year old son. This really works well. This is a very natural, uh, very effective way to repel ticks. So regardless of what you're using to spray yourself down um, against ticks, make sure that you look yourself over after your home from your hike. So a lint roller is my friend. A lint roller is very useful um, when you strip and go over your body with the lint roller. It picks up all the tiny, tiny little ticks if you have any on yourself. All right, so today's agenda is hopefully we can find some morels, the ever elusive morels. So when you forage for mushrooms or for anything for that matter, you literally have to go off the beaten trail. So we're heading up into the woods right now and um, looking to see if we can find Scarlet Cops or Morales. Can be challenging, but it's fun too at the same time. Look at all these beautiful flowers. Look at how cool that is. A little snail house. Cool things you see when you're out in the woods. So truth be told, I think we are late for the Scarlet Cups. They like to grow when it's a little bit more cold and it just warmed up so fast this year. We didn't really get our act together to get out here sooner while it was still cold. So I think the Scarlet Cups are done, but it's okay. We're going to look for more else and for gyrometra fastigiata, which is from the false morel family, um, but it is edible. As you can see, I have a stick. I recommend finding one when you get into the woods because it's very handy to scoop the leaves away to see if there's anything under the leaves as far as uh, a mushroom goes and not get your hands bit by spiders that might be hiding in the leaves. Look what I found. Trout lilies, so beautiful. And then this little green stuff right here, this is chickweed, edible. I don't remember what all nutrients it has, but it is super nutrient dense and quite edible. You can put it in your salad, stir fry, make juice out of it, put it in a smoothie. Mm -hmm. It tastes green. Very good. So we found some alcoholic ink caps. Um, these are actually on the old, getting old side. But these are still edible. Um, they are delicious fried. You can see them. There's, there's lots of them here. Whenever you find a, a uh, group of alcoholic ink caps, they're very plentiful usually. Like this one is prime. You see the underside, the gill side is white, and this one is blacker, gray-black. The very mature ones actually get very black, um, but they are yummy. So this is a prime location for looking or trying to find morels. The all elusive morels, where are they? I can't find any. I can't find any. Where's my precious? Where's my precious? Can't find any. 
Why can't I find any? Are we too late? Are we too early? Are we in the wrong spot? Maybe somebody picked them already? Maybe somebody found our honey spot. Maybe somebody found where we usually pick the morels and picked them all. The mental tortures of looking for morels. You never know. You never know. Everybody in the woods who's looking for morels is going to come over and see where you found them and next year they will be the ones that will pick them so shh. and it's crazy it's right along the trail it's it's wild they're so elusive actually my husband gets the credit he found this one do you see that and then right there and then look at this one this is a huge thing it's in the dirt in the freaking dirt and someone stepped on it probably me or my husband or my son or my uh, uh, or, or the stroller. <laughs> it's horrible. But look at it. Isn't that so cool? It's like a little bit frost damage right here, but that's okay. They're still edible. We're gonna quickly pick them before anybody else comes around and sees them. Ah. Listen to the frogs. Such a beautiful sound. I feel like I'm melting in nature. right here look at these and then there's one right there do you see how absolutely camouflagey they are they completely hide they look the same color as the leaves like the oak leaves and their texture is similar to the um, tulip poplar seed pods or to last year's walnuts so whenever you find them, your heart does a little flutter. Mine does. And I'm like, oh, I found him. So we want to cut this off and put this back where you took this mushroom. Look at this dainty. My precious. The morale. But I want to show you folks um, the bee balm. So this is how the bee balm or monarda looks right now. You have the dry stems of the seed pods and then down at the bottom you have the new sprouts which are perfect for picking and fermenting which I made a video about fermenting bee balm a few years ago and the link will come up on the top. You can click and find out how to uh, ferment bee balm and make tea out of it. So foraging folks takes a lot of attention and intention. It's not like going to the grocery store where you go to aisle six every time and find the same things you always found in aisle six. Um, that's what makes it so very cool and um, interesting. But also, um, you have to be very, very vigilant and you can't become complacent when you're foraging because you never want to accidentally pick something that looks like something you think you're picking, but is not actually what you think you're picking. So you have to be very vigilant and careful. That's the fun of foraging. This is a larch tree. Look at this, it's absolutely beautiful. This is a deciduous conifer. And um, you can see that it just sprouted its new needles and um, it has its new pine cones. Actually, the pine cones are edible and contain large amounts of vitamin C and a whole bunch of other vitamins and nutrients. Probably, I wouldn't be surprised if they're rich in antioxidants. Um, but this is also one of the few trees that does not rot. Once it's cut, it, it takes many, 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 many years for it to even begin to decompose. So I got one of the baby pine cones. Mm, they're so good. Eating the woods, so good. Saba, what's your show? 
we have lugged ourselves from the bottom of the ridge all the way to the top, the very top of the ridge to find no <laughs> Gyrometra fastigiata and no mushrooms for that matter at all. We can go to the right. There's a trail that goes right down and we will be by our car um, fairly quickly. Or we can go back how we came and take another trail and potentially, potentially find some alcoholic ink. So guess where we're going? Check out this self-propelled stroller. <laughs> We're here at the tree, at the tree, and there are some alcoholic ink caps. Um, a lot of them are actually past their prime, but there are some back here that are actually quite nice and just coming out of the ground. Very, very nice. We're going to collect these. And then also right by the, by the base of the tree right here, these are velvet stalks which are also tiny, they'll be ready in a week or so. So here is one of the most wonderful plants for um, healing respiratory ailments. It's called the mullion. I made a video about it last year and the link will be up here um, to that video. But um, right now is the perfect time to collect leaves. Uh, mullion is the number one plant for um, helping the body combat any kind of respiratory illnesses. Another wonderful medicinal plant is the yarrow leaf. It is growing right now and it's prime time to pick the leaves. Um, this is a huge antiseptic plant. You can pair it with the mullein leaf and steep a tea with it. It will give your body a lot of good benefits um, that help boost the immune system. Beautiful watercress. And this is the perfect place. Uh, there's a clean stream and it's actively flowing. Um, I personally would not eat watercress from a stream that was being fed from a farm or anywhere where there are fields that maybe get chemicals sprayed on them. So this cool looking plant is actually a male um, horse tail herb and then you got the little green plants which are the female horse tail plant uh, but uh, the horse tail plant is actually really really um, medicinal it has silica a lot of absorbable silica and um, I just collected a handful and we're going to be drinking tea out of horse tail and then there's a little bit of um, yarrow leaves. I think we got quite the catch today. Some yarrow and horsetail and mullion and morels and alcoholic ink caps and watercress and some um, little green pine cones. I feel uh, that our foraging was a success today. I'm excited. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, please hit a like and subscribe for more videos like this.